Matthew, you've been working with the Slater family. Just tell us about the part you've played in this in trying to help them find Jay. Of course. Um, thank you for having us. Um, we we came in about 12 days into the disappearance, uh, initially to look after the huge challenge of dealing with media uh, and the huge amount of armchair detectives, um, so-called experts, and the vile comments that uh, your colleague Tom just mentioned in that report there. Um, but since then, obviously, with the new developments, we've been working on logistics with them. We're now looking at uh, bringing Jay home, dealing with the massive paperwork, uh, translations and and logistics that need to be involved in that and making it what is just the worst time for them uh, as easy as possible. I'm really interested to hear about your experiences of dealing, like you say, with those of us in the media and those using social media. A little bit of background to this for people watching. We were contacted at Sky News by Jay's friend uh, Lucy, who was looking for him. She was the last person to speak to him and clearly wanted to get word out there to see if they could find out where he was. But, of course, it's a double-edged sword. That then prompts other people to start joining in and speculating, doesn't it? It does. Um, and in doing this job for over 20 years, I've never seen a case that's attracted such vitriolic and, and hateful comments. Um, we, we're very lucky that we have freedom of speech, but with freedom of speech comes great responsibility. Um, you wouldn't say the things that these people have been writing uh, and, and posting to the world. Would you say that to this poor family who are now grieving, yet people are still putting it out there? And when people have someone missing in their family, it's it's natural to Google their name to see if there's any news, any updates. And what people are seeing is just this vile stuff that's utterly baseless almost 100% of the time. Uh, and it causes practitioners like uh, myself, uh, our organisation, authorities, people who are really trying to help, it caused them a huge amount of time in trying to get rid of it. And obviously, if someone sends us an email saying, I know where Jay is, he's here, we have to follow up every single lead. Now, that obviously takes time. Um, we, we've had just hundreds in the last week alone. Um, but ultimately, it hinders the search and it's terrifyingly horrible for a family that are going through this. Why do you think it has happened? It's something we saw during Nicola Bully going missing. And of course, not dissimilar to Jay, it seems like that was just a horrible accident. She fell into a river, he uh, fell in a mountainous area. It's an accident, it's terrible. But accidents happen. There isn't always some other reason or conspiracy or something along those lines. No, that's it. But it's a strange thing with with the advent of social media these days, and we've seen it build up and ramp up over the last sort of five, six years, where it's now the done thing that wherever there's a real life crime drama acting out in front of our eyes on television, uh, half the population need to jump on Facebook, set up a Facebook group to say to tell the world what really yeah. happened in their eyes. And they might be sat there in Western Supermare, but of course they know more than any of the people working on the case. They know more than any of the people who are physically there. But this just goes on and on, and it gets a huge amount of traction. And it's really worrying to the point where our charity um, thinks it's time that it has to stop. We're going to be talking to the Home Secretary in the coming weeks uh, and see what action can actually be done to put a stop to this, because it really is damaging and traumatising. Because, look, Matthew, I'm, I've been looking at your website, uh, and you're trying to help plenty of families with missing people. People have been missing for years. Sakiba, Jolly, Jeremy King... Giles Pooley, lots of people. Yeah. Just a final sort of question on this is, is why do some missing person stories get the attention like Jay's, like Nicola Bullies and others perhaps don't because they're all, they all have families affected by this? Exactly. Uh, and that's something else that, that we've been trying to, to fathom since day one here, is that we can have two cases come in on the same day and they can be broadly identical. Uh, the type of person, the, the, the sex of the person, the location and, and the background. And one of those stories will go absolutely viral and everyone will be talking about it and then obviously speculating about it. And meanwhile, the other one will get no interest whatsoever. Um, it's I just don't understand it. Um, we'd love to understand it, but it, it is, as you say, hugely unfair to any of the parents. And, of course, in this last week, when yet again we've had one huge case getting all the publicity, which, of course, it should, um, but not to take anything away from, from Jay Slater and, and his family. We've had families phoning up saying, why can't I be all over the news? Why isn't my son all over the news? And there's really no answer for that. All we can do 
is put out our stuff on our website and on our social media feeds and hope that good people like your viewers, people who are watching this now, hunt down LBT Global, find us and share our stuff because that's how we get the message out there and ultimately that's how we bring people home. Well, Matthew, I appreciate you talking to us about it this evening as well and uh, telling us a bit more about what you do in well, you know, the light of this sad news about Jay Slater, of course. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.